Jeremiah 49 10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Call Halal, Yahweh Bashan, Awashai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops, salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever, to the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathens that look like the heathens, and to the Aquath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom, this is your brother Malcolma, coming at you with part two. Um, with my response to German immigrants, not white and not wanted. Whiteness was made up. Let's go back to the beginning uh, of her video. Basically, when she states, well, let's just let her say it. So let's go back to the beginning. Did you ever stress about us Freaking having three kids? No. Oh, I hate these. It was always part of the plan. In the 18th century, Ben Franklin is looking at the Germans and saying, you guys are stupid and you're swarthy and we don't want you here. We want to keep our colonies as white as possible. And you fast forward 150 years and you have Hitler <laughs> saying, you know, to lots of other ethnic groups in Europe, like, you guys are stupid and you're swarthy and we don't want you here and we want to keep our country as, as white as possible. So what just happened there? In 1751, Franklin said he didn't want basically brown-skinned people. That's what swarthy means. Go to the first video if you don't know or go look the word up. All right, dark, dark people, the darkness. So what they what they uh, erroneously call black, but dark brown people. All right, uh, 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 sw uh, swarthy. They referred to as dusky. You know, that was an old insult. The uh, the Negroes used to call themselves in the South, you know, dusky, which turned to dusty, but it's really it really meant dusky. All right. Um, and also the word tawny, which was a light skinned uh brown person, a light brown person. And they say that the all of Europe was was swarthy, all right, and dusky. All of Asia was was tawny or dusky. So what are they telling you? What they were telling you is that there was no such thing as white people. All right. And the people who refer to themselves white, because he does say the white and the red. He, he admits that they're red in this letter. They're the red, they're the Edomites. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. All right. Because they took garments and they dyed them. They took uh, uh, garments and dyed them a reddish color. So it's like a hairy garment, not red and hairy, which is a common mistake that you hear people say. Right, because the garments were hairy, but they were red, so it was the color that was the focus, not the hair. All right, but nevertheless, there is no such thing as white people, they made it up. All right, and then they made up uh, false white superiority doctrines using pseudoscience like Darwinism. This, uh, let's go to uh, let's shift the video to here, I'm gonna let it play from about there. And I'm going to read a uh, scripture. Um, and that scripture being Timothy. Let's go to the book of Timothy. No, it's Timothy. Where is my <laughs> mind going blank? Is it Second Timothy? It's First Timothy two. Yeah, I think it's First Timothy two. Nope. Just bear with me. As much as I use this scripture, <laughs> why I'm having a block on where it is. Hold on, just give me a second here. Wow, 
was right there. I just was short. If this is 1 Timothy 6 and 20, and it reads, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. So when the Bible, history, and physical evidence proves a point, Esau Edom tries to use pseudoscience to get around biblical facts, historical facts, and reality facts. They come with lies so from pseudoscience, which is made up of hypotheses and which basically mean guess, a guess, and theories, which are guesses, not facts. And they take theories and guesses and make them facts. All right. So let's let her continue from this point. Exclusive of, exclusive of the newcomers, holy so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, oh, let's the go Italians, back a little bit. the French, the Russians, and the Swede, asses, Jefferson wrote. Wherein, as in our German settlements, they preserve for a long time their own languages, habits, and principles of government. Benjamin Franklin also wrote this in a letter. He said, quote, which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionately very small. All Africa is black or tawny. Asia is chiefly tawny. America, exclusive of, exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, the French, the Russians, and the Swedes are generally of what we call swarthy complexions. So he just told you that all those people in Europe were swarthies, what you call Negroes. You refer to the book of J.A. Rogers, which gives you the Negro coats of arms, all right? So when we tell you that they were not Uhtred of Bebenburg, they were not the, the Vikings, they were not the Brits, they were not the Scots, they have lied about that, all right? Those were all so-called Negroes. Um, in this book, The Negro Question, all right, on the missing link on page, uh, page four and five, I'm just going to read some quick excerpts from different books and read the names of the, uh, the books and, the, inf and the, uh, the information that it came from. Professor Winchell Ad Alexander, Our Remote Ancestry, 1815 to 1900 collection of journals. The short black man came from Atlantis, Northern Africa, and they overran Europe. They were known as Britons, all right? Now, they didn't come from Africa. They came from, from the land of Israel, all right? He's lying about that part. But they, but the Britons, the actual Britons, the Saxons, all right? It wasn't uh, all the actors that played in the last kingdom, all right? It wasn't all the actors that played in Vikings, Okay? Now, is it a chance that some of them may have roots to, to the people I'm talking about? Yes. I always talk, you know, I open every every lesson with the, the Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathens that look like the heathens. But for the, And so that means that some Israelites are going to actually look like so-called white people. That's what Oliver Cromwell was doing when he was uh, clearing all the, the brown skin swarthy people out of Europe in the 1600s. All right. Because you hear people talk about the Irish slavery and all yeah, but those because those pale Irish men had black forefathers. That's why he was getting rid of them. All right, because the worst nigger, all right, to them is one that looked that could pass for being white. All right, hence the reason why the uh, Italians, especially Sicilians, to this day are not allowed to join the KKK because they are uh, aware that they were spawned from Negroes. They came from the Moors. All right, but here here's another uh, information. It says Roman historian Tacticus, the origins of Black Britons. The Iberians are black. This is so the I what's the Iberian Peninsula? That's Scotland and Ireland. All right. Uh, Roman his, historian Tacitus, Tacitus, the origin of black Britons. Iberians are black people with curly hair. Anthropological Review, Society, London, Volume 8. So that's where it came from. Joseph Ristens. All right. Annals of Caledonian Picts and Scots, Volume 2, pages 7 and 27. Picks and Brits are brown complexion with curly hair. All right. Ivan Van Sertema. I have his book on the shelf behind me. The African presence in early Europe. Once again, they try to group Hamites and they try to group uh, Hamitic people, Africans and Negroes together. They are not the same people. They're trying to deny admitting that they're Israelites. And let's get a receipt to show that. Let's go to the evidence folder. I even had images of, uh, uh, of Spartans here where they remove the, uh, 
the noses and lips, but they couldn't remove the cornrows from the from the from the hair though. All right. Hold on. Where are you? Here we go. Evidence folder. And I know it comes up pretty quick. Here we go. We'll just use my phone. But there it is. All right. There's a difference between an African and a Negro. All right. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, the progenitor of the dark race, is not, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Lib Libyans, and Canaanites. Canaan was the land. So Hamites, Africans, were in Canaan, all in the land of, of what you refer to as Israel. All right. And remember, uh, Moses grew up in a in the house of Pharaoh, who was a Hamite. Hence the reason why he was able to mingle among them. Two different people with two different spirits, both swarthy. All right. Typically, Hamites are darker in most cases, but not always. All right. So there's that. So when they say that African presence, no, that was an Israelite presence. Africans pretty much fail. As a matter of fact, they've been showing you some Scottish coats of arms in this book on page 24. All right. And these images and these paintings and these statues are still all over Europe to this day. All right. But uh, let's read some more evidence before we just let it play some more. And let it finish, actually, this time. All right. Um, Albert Churchwood, 1912, Origins. In Evolutions, page 12 and 13, the Black Bosque, meaning bodies, were exterminated from Europe. All right, so they removed them. Professor Boyd Dawkins, our earliest ancestors' bygone days, a lecture delivered in the public hall of Collyhurst, Manchester, that was in London, uh, January 8th, 1879. The ancient Britons, Irish, Scots, are short black people. Once again, Uchid of Bevenberg was not a so called white guy. All right. The outlaw king, Robert the Bruce, you know, and, and, and Robert the Black. Remember, King James son with uh, uh, King uh, Charles II was uh, 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 or his grandson. Charles II was referred to was nicknamed Black Boy. I still have yet to meet a white guy that's nicknamed Black Boy yet. All right. He was so dark and, and, and Oliver Cromwell put him beheaded him. And removed him from power and all his people in the 1600s. All right. Uh, Dr. Thurnham, Nature Journal and Science, page 92. From the evidence at hand, it seems that the Iberian black man occupied the whole of Western Europe at one time. Professor Huxley, 1870. The Iberian race, page 332. The Iberian boss black bones have been found all over Europe with his animals. It is undeniable truth and evidence. All right. And it is extremely racist and hatred to go against all this evidence and then push this whole ideology of this made up white thing, this made up whiteness. As a matter of fact, let's listen to uh, Dr. Jacqueline, Jacqueline Battalora. Let's go. This is the invention of the white people. Uh, must watch the invention of white people in relevance today, Dr. Jacqueline Battalora. And we'll go with this one. White people did not exist before 1681. Again, white people did not exist on planet Earth until 1681. Number two, any claim Enough. that this group called white people... Now let's let her play. The Swedes are swarthy. <laughs> That's... I, I don't know. Uh, as are the Germans also. The Saxons only accepted... Which is a lie. The English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. I wish their numbers were increased. What should, in the sight of superior beings, darken its people? Why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America, where we have so far an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies of increasing the lovely white and red? Being a part of the community at the Chicago School means that you're willing to bitch. take note of things that are going on outside of the four walls of the school. Fuck your school. Now, I did some research to you're kind of figure out this teaching this in your school, Native Americans, lying piece of shit. Said, read, my reading of this primary source is that he's not referring to Native Americans. I think he's talking kind of about maybe a 
like the redness of cheek. Exactly. Red because Native Americans were tawny and swarthy. Okay? They were tawny and swarthy, dark complexion. So he's talking about the redness, the cheeks of so called white people. Esau, Edom, the red man. As a matter of fact, let me get one more scripture since she said that. That's why they, they took the word ruddy and tried to attach it to, to white people. When ruddy is actually talking about someone who's maroonish, reddish brown, reddish brown, a youthful looking. It had nothing to do with uh, paleness. But this is uh, Thessalonians is where I want to go. And it reads, and this is verse 3, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Esau has been revealed. Let's jump down to verse 8. Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord sh shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy at the brightness of his coming. And, and the spirit of the Lord's mouth are his prophets. All right, us. Referring to Native Americans when he said red, my reading of this primary source is that he's not referring to Native Americans. I think he's talking kind of about maybe a, like the redness of cheek you might see on someone with fairer skin because earlier in the same paragraph, he refers to America as Native Americans as tawny. As tawny. Uh, so I think- Meaning light I brown. Think he's not referring to them by saying red. But perhaps I am partial to the complexion of my country, for such kind of partiality is nature to mankind, unquote. From the Census Bureau records, I saw that Americans who have German ancestry actually comprise about 50 million people, and it may actually be more at this point, making them the largest ancestry group ahead of the Irish Americans, the African Americans, and the English Americans at this point. So at this point, German... And let's get it right. She still hasn't, either she doesn't know or she just doesn't want to admit that African Americans are actually from the land of Israel and not Africa at all. They were refugees in the west coast of Africa. Fled uh, 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 the Roman persecution in 70 AD and, and set up all those colonies along uh, the west coast of Africa. It was referred to as Negro land. They even had a Fort Judah and a Fort Benjamin there. All right. And follow, still to this day, some of those people still follow and keep Hebrew customs. Americans with German ancestry are the majority group. I want to read another uh, quote of Benjamin Franklin's from that document. In short, unless the stream of their importation could be turned from this to other colonies, that's to say, if we can't divert the Germans from coming here and sending them there, they will soon outnumber us. And all that the advantages we have will not, in my opinion, be able to preserve our language and even our government will become precarious. Right. And so there was an uprising, all right, called Bacon's Rebe Rebellion um, that happened in the 1600s. And um, the way that they dealt, because what happened was that the, the people of color, the Tawnies and the Swarthies, and even some of the indentured servers, servants, so-called, or, or they weren't called white yet, they're actually called German or English or whatever, uh, got together to fight against uh, the oppressive wealthy elect. So the wealthy elect came up with this whiteness thing and then gave benefits to the poor uh, Germans, English, etc. Red people. They gave the other red people, the beautiful red people that uh, that Benjamin Franklin spoke of. They gave them uh, head of the line rights, uh, the ability to buy firearms, the ability to marry to uh uh they they denied because at at this point too the uh the red women were marrying the tawny and swarthy men they were not marrying the the uh the 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 newly called white male so they were angry about that so they passed all these laws that 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 uh that forbid men of color the tawnies and the swarthy and the dusky from owning firearms property or voting and it gave so it, it now gave this privilege to this new discovered newly found whiteness, all right? Even though they still were screwing them over financially and, and other ways, it gave them a little bit more incentive because it made their lives a little bit easier, 
all right and then they and then they constantly would, would tell them that they were broken poor because of the Tawnees and the Swarthies and the dusky people and that's why you have so much enmity uh between the different shades of color this day even though some of these people were intermarried intermingled in family you got to remember prior to Esau Edom with this whole whiteness and blackness these false social constructs uh, people didn't determine your nationality by your skin color. People determine your nationality by who your father was and what land you came from. That's the way they, they looked at it. All right. So this whole color scheme that they still use to this day, that's fraudulent thing. You go fill out an application, you're a Pacific Islander or you, you know, anything to avoid. Because if they start acknowledging who the other nations are, the, you know, it, 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 then you will learn that the that the so-called white man is Esau Edom and he does not want that. But it's too late because it's out now. All right. And she's gotten this far. Her only the next step for her to discover is, wait a minute, these people have ancient names. And that's what's going to ha happen next. But let's not forget that the Germans, like all these other immigrants, were just pieces of a puzzle. The story of America is one of immigrants. Whether our founding fathers recognized that they were actually immigrants as well, people from different backgrounds were all contributing their unique talents and their cultures to the tapestry of this nation. And yes, the conversation about immigration has persisted throughout our history. This is not um, something where we can, you know, look back and say, hey, we did a really good job back in this decade. Like, this is something that we've been working through for a long time. In the 18th century, Ben Franklin is looking at the Germans and saying, you guys are stupid and you're swarthy and we don't want you here. We want to keep our colonies as white as possible. And you fast forward 150 years and you have Hitler <laughs> saying, you know, to lots of other ethnic groups in Europe, like, you guys are stupid and you're swarthy and we don't want you here and we want to keep our country as, as white as possible. I have Son always a had a dream to be a special education teacher, but and, and lying, not tell the truth. Shut the f and I just the irony of that is astounding to me, and I think it again is this the same theme that we've seen happening over and over again throughout this series of becoming American. This idea of whiteness, I don't, I don't think uh, it, it's not a reality. It's not a reality. As Jacqueline Badalora said, they made it up. All right. They are Esau Edom. All right. The wicked and they and their end is, is going to be very, very shameful. Just as is a shame. This is why they want to come against CRT, what they call critical race theory. No, as as just like the channel that this will go up on first is actually critical race histor historical facts. That's what it is. And they don't want it to be found out that whiteness is made up. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukakadash, Wa'ababababal, Kwam Yasharala, Shalom.